Today in Hexham, we return to that moment frozen in time. Freya Valentine bleeding out with only eight hours yet to live, and with the hive descending upon our fortress. We have but a very short time to act and to prepare. Hexham, we must fight. Kia Legionnaires. Rykon here, and welcome back to RimWorld Biotech, where, well, the fight against the bugs is happening. And Freya Valentine is slowly dying, but we are not going to let her fall. No, we are currently getting into position as best we can. We're going to have to shift a few of our folks forwards here. Suarez, yep, stand on the block. The bugs are already starting to make their way down here. And shortly, we will have folks joining us from the cave. We just need to hold out a little longer. Okay, all right. Looks like Lilion is going to be moving in here to assist Rabid Ghoul. And I would really hope that <laughs> some of our ranged fighters are going to show up sooner rather than later. And here they are, here they are. Get spread out. Let's get killing. And let's hope the fire from that monosaur doesn't spread too far. All right, chaos is underway. The first of our turrets is down. A big explosion there. Now, we should be able to hold back our foes here. They're not all rushing towards us at the same time, but they are, you know, they're moving pretty quickly here. Runestern, let's get over towards the side. Shivo, you're going to have to hold that flank as best you can. Gnarly, absolutely gnarly. And we can see that more bugs are getting made as we speak. Lilion, any chance for a combat command? You know what? Yes, we've got one. Let's get that out there. Okay. Stand your ground, fight, the bugs will perish. <laughs> and just look at those numbers. There's still quite a few out there. Are there many up here? Not really. We're leveling up down here. I don't think anyone's in danger of bleeding out. Runestone, we should probably get you heading back. Looks like that spot might be taken by someone. Jesse, let's get you ready to do a quick coagulate here. Excellent. Love to see it. Okay, how is everyone else doing? Okay, I don't think we're going to be dropping just yet, but the, the wall, oh, the wall's a little compromised. It looks like Therian was the one late to the party, but you're here now. Rabbit Ghoul is down. Okay, all right, Eric, we're going to get you. Hmm, not enough blood. We need someone to coagulate from the rear here. All right, let's get you moving up there, Casito. And we're just going to get everyone else holding this front as best they can. There's lots of injured bugs here. We've got a berserk rat somewhere, or rather rat. <laughs> Our prisoner is berserk. Suarez, you're looking pretty injured there. Any gunshot wounds? No, I think we're close enough that we're not going to see any uh, friendly fire. Jack, we are going to get you doing a coagulate here though, because Suarez has more than a few injuries. Malicet, you're hanging on. Rabbit Ghoul is down, but she has been healed. Redwind, you're doing okay. Shivo, you're just hanging on there. Keep on fighting, team. Look at this front. They're holding. We can survive this. We will heal. And you know what? We're going to have some scars. We're going to have some wounds. With us being sanguifages, over time, those wounds will seal. It's starting to get quieter. Redwind is fleeing some flame. That's understandable. Totally understandable. I think that's it. There's some stragglers for sure. That is the bulk of our enemies destroyed. Okay, yeah, Redwind, you stay inside there. And you know what? Let's get some of the kids helping out. A coagulate there. And let's check on Freya real quick, see how she's doing. Three hours! Okay, we've got to make this fast. Ocarin, you know what? I think we're going to need you to try and get out there real quick. We're going to go around the insects, around and up. And oh boy, a roof collapse. Okay, nothing was destroyed other than just a bit of damage up here. That's okay. We can manage with all of that. Eric, no, in this case, Runestone. Let's get you doing a coagulate up here. Angelica, I want you coagulating on Lilion. And Jonathan, let's get you helping out Dallas over here. Oh boy, what's happening? A quest! Desperate refugees. Well, we're feeling a little desperate right now. Let's deal with our own problems first and make sure that Ocarin is actually going to be able to make it up here okay. Looks like she's safe so far. There's only a rabbit. That's good. Runestone getting better at shooting. Excellent. And you know what? Eland, let's do a quick rescue on Rabid Ghoul if we can. Shivo, you've been an absolute beast, my lad. 15 years old and is standing on the front line here. Lilion, let's get you shifting on over. 
You can help more on that side, and Shivo has finally fallen. We're gonna get Elena here to go and try and grab Shivo when she can. And let's check on Ocarin. Okay, you're making it good. We've gotta nearly be there, surely. <laughs> There's always more, isn't there? But that, that's got to be it. Those got to be the last two. We got to hope so. No, there's a mega spider there. That's fine. Just keep on pushing through. Ocarin, we're going to need you to do a leap, I think. A long jump on over towards where Freya is. All right, that's good. Close now. Let's coagulate. And two hours. Okay. We were always going to make it, weren't we? There we are. Let's say rescue. And let's just check that path. Seems safe enough. And oh yeah. We've just got this last, no, <laughs> not last, there's still at least three out there. Well, that's all right. I don't know if we put them on search and destroy, if they would be able to track down the hives automatically. So we're probably just going to have to send a few of our folks over there to clean things up. Oh, and Jonathan, we really need to get you dropping these Molotovs. <laughs> there we go. That's better. Glad he wasn't automatically throwing that about. Oh, we do have one mega spider here. Managed to get back up off the ground. Ocarin, oh, Ocarin was getting attacked. There's a spellopede close by. Okay, we're gonna have to get some more distance here. Let's go for a long jump. All right, that's good. Keep on moving, you've got at least one more of those in you. A shuttle has arrived. Ah, uh, to collect the laborers. Okay, all right, well, we're one laborer short right now. Let's just wait <laughs> until we've dealt with this problem before we really do anything else with them. Okay, Freya, let's just get you somewhere, yeah? Okay, I think, I think we're good down here. Yeah, all right, we're just gonna have a look, coagulate any existing wounds that we have. Suarez, how are you looking? You're good across the board there. Lilion, same deal with you. Okay, Runestone, all right. A few fresh ones, but it's nothing too severe. We'll still get Lilion helping you out with that, making sure that no one has any open wounds. There's so many creatures here that need to be finished off. And honestly, the easiest way for us to do that is just to um, jump in here and select all of them. There's many, many creatures there. The kids will be able to help us out with that. And I believe now we can actually just go and make everyone unrestricted again. Looks like Malicept is still bleeding. Okay. Elena, let's get you doing a coagulate over there. And Redwind is going to need that too. So, Belle, coagulate, thank you. Okay, so, we need to send a crew up there. We need to send everyone that's currently untouched. Jack Dodge, you can stay. Yeah, and this lot here, we are going to give them freedom to take care of each other. That means that they will be moving without the combat command, but you know what? That's okay. First thing, we need to try and take care of any stragglers that we have on the map, like this mega spider. A few good shots, and that will definitely get us attention. Ah, uh, there's more of them. There we go, excellent work. Oh, there was another one over there. And it sounds like we're already, <laughs> already killing them. Eland is the one to do it. Ocarin, oh, you're nearly there. Let's make sure that we get you coagulated as well, because you're dealing with some injuries. Okay, well, it looks like they did destroy some of our hardware in here, and whoop, we've got more of them popping out at the moment. That's all right. Let's take that little one down. Kazito, Jonathan, let's get you ready for what's on its way. Oh, good work, team. Good work. Hold position there. Let's take care of these bugs. Damn, surprising that they still have enough armor and will <laughs> to get all the way up towards us. Closer still. Avoiding friendly fire if we can here. Kazito, let's get you hitting that mega spider with a piercing spine. And of course, if we have the ability to, we will be coagulating. Looks like Eric's gonna have to deal with some of these injuries. That's fine. We're gonna push on. We need to get to these hives and we need to get them destroyed as quickly as we can. Meanwhile, back at home, Bella's just playing outside. Okay. <laughs> let's get that one there finished off and that one out by the water. Wow. Checking back down here, it doesn't look like we've got much, if any, still alive. Yeah, there's, there's a few around there. Nothing that we can't manage. Right, now, where is that shuttle? <laughs> where has it actually landed? All the way up here. That's quite the journey. Okay, well, let's get the three of you making your way up there. We could maybe try and get them to take Zebo with them. Yeah, Vari, you're wandering around down here. What if I unforbid you? Can I get you to not consume? 
<laughs> can you start to haul him? You can't just pick him up, can you? You can't grab him. That's unfortunate. Yeah, and then, you know, if I tell you to go to the shuttle, anything, you're probably going to drop him, I imagine. Yeah, you just dropped him. Okay. Well, let's get the rest of them in there. That's something, I suppose. And Zebo, well, you'll be useful to us. Oh, we did have a mega spider in here by the looks of things. And from this position, we should be able to take out most of the hives. We'll just kind of split people up a little bit. Oh, maybe not. Jonathan, head back. Thank you, good sir. Old chap, just keep on dodging and weaving. <laughs> it seems like he had their attention. Good work, Jonathan. Just keep on moving. There we go. Excellent. And we'll just kind of, yeah, split them up here. Eric taking a hive down for us. Jonathan and the others just slowly picking off the rest. Last two hives up here, and then we're clear. That's that. That's it done. Everyone, get back home. Therian, thank you for making it out here. And Jonathan's night ceremony is now available. He's a knight because we cleared the hive and the pods have arrived. The Arcotech arm and some uranium. Now, the arm, we are going to be installing that on Lilion, which means one of the bionic arms that she's got will be able to go to someone else. Oh boy. All right. So, let's take stock of things. Let's see where we are and you know what? We'll make sure that arm gets hauled pretty quickly. Looks like we've got some tattered apparel on Freya. She's dealing with extreme blood loss at the moment. She is not a sanguifage, which that is also something that we're going to be rectifying as soon as we have the opportunity to do so. Another little bit of cleanup we need to do out here is remove this mega spider, repair this landing beacon so our ships can land somewhere at least a little safe. Elena, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, but yes, let's have a look at this quest here. 13 desperate refugees are approaching. Their leader is called Maker. Mm. They say their caravan has been ambushed and everything has been taken. Also, a medical emergency with Freya. Oh boy. We'll get to that, Freya. Don't you worry. I think it's the extreme blood loss. They want to stay here for 18 days. They've offered to work and fight for free. You know what? An extra 13 people seems excessive, but we have the food to make this work. We're going to accept them. Wow. There's a lot of them. There is a lot of them. And thankfully, by the looks of things, no kids. So we can work with that. Maker... Right, you're the one that's led them here, and they're all different types of xenotypes, by the looks of things. You're a Neanderthal, and a teenager, you're their leader. I see, I see. Well, you've got to be tough, I imagine. We've got some baseliners, we've got some Neanderthals, we've got a dirt mole, huh, a Yetikin. Yeah, an interesting group. They're, wait, what? They're all believers in the blood. Ha <laughs> ha, well... Of course we're going to welcome them. That is fantastic. It's nice to know that the good word is spreading. Obviously, we are going to be wary of them. Very wary. And we're going to make sure that we actually kind of shift them around a little bit here, just so that they're going to be at the uh, bottom of the order. There we go. That's looking at least a little bit better. And uh, we're going to need some temporary accommodations for them. Uh, our hospital is a little full at the moment, but we can always chuck down some sleeping spots and or, you know, just create some new beds for them to sleep in. I mean, if they want, they could take some of the prison beds, but I don't think they're going to want to. <laughs> right, Freya, yes. Life-threatening blood loss. Nothing we can do about that right now. Her consciousness is super, super low. Wow. Gomi is a fantastic candidate for us. <laughs> as far as recruits go, a cannibal ecologist, a mountain lover, Psychically deaf, that's that's fine, but that melee skill, my gosh. Yeah, I mean, if Gomi chooses to stay, I don't think we could say no. Oh my gosh, the sh oh no, the shuttle, <laughs> the shuttle's just been sitting there. Vare is starving. Okay, let's have a look. Set to load. We can't give any specific items. I was hoping maybe, ah, uh, maybe we could have got Zebo in there. Uh, are all of them in there? They are. Okay, so we can send them off. And we will. Off with yours. And, uh, yeah. No repercussions yet. I think the damage is already done. But it's not enough that uh, the Empire has given up on us. 
with the extra hands that we have around here, uh, it's going to make a big difference. They're all kind of miserable. Um, colonist left unburied. Yeah. I hope we going to bury Zebo. He's not of our faith, so we can't, I'm pretty sure. Oh, we can do a final death for our grizzly that's out there. And you know what? I think that's probably worth us doing. Another jade urn. Let's make that happen. We'll get it turned on, of course. Wow. Just look at all the people here. Slowly arriving. Oh, <laughs> Lara's going on a food binge. That That's okay. But yeah, this, this room is going to be uh, near capacity, I think. Yeah, I don't think we can fit any more people in here. Uh, and I was hoping that this was going to be a little bit faster. It doesn't actually seem to be moving at this point. We might have to have a look at just cancelling it. Yeah, the electric crematorium is turned on currently, burning through our excess power that we've got. <laughs> and pretty much everyone is not having a great time. No, I think we're going to have to cancel this. It's just taking too long. A shame, to be sure. But Grizzly Bear, number 22, will try and give you your final rest at some point. In the meantime, it looks like in two days, we're going to be able to have an Elysium. That will definitely help with the overall mood of our guests. Oh, you know what we can do for fun? Because they are believers, we should be able to get away with doing a, uh, wee cannibal feast. It feels like it's been a while. And you know what? It's not much, but I feel like it's worth us getting Zebo buried properly. At least so that he's not a, uh, long-lasting negative effect on everyone that's here. I mean, the entire siege that happened here and everything afterwards was his fault after all. <laughs> Hey, Freya is recovering. Well, that's great to see. The blood loss, not so bad. And oh, okay, okay. Maybe I spoke too soon. But yeah, she's uh, she's making it. Oh, okay. Pex is no longer. Oh, the the Pex cheater. Pex is cheater. Okay. <laughs> Lilion and Jonathan's kid, Pex. <laughs> AKA, or Cheetah, has grown up. Um, Pex, right, I guess you're gonna be pretty muscular, huh? Let's have a look at this then, huh? Yep, I mean, that's great. Hang on, wait, what? I'm sorry? Pex has decided to become a follower of the ideologian Free Doctrine. My, my boy, what are you doing? You can remain a colonist, but we are going to have to do something about that. Uh, that does also mean that Pex is going to need his own room and right now you know things are things are pretty crowded we do have more rooms that are on their way we just need to get uh chipping away at some stone up here but it looks like we are going to be able to have our blood cult celebration uh with Pex included it's going to take two hours and it's looking like it's going to be a good one there are, there's a lot of us here let's cross our fingers and pray for a good celebration the munching has begun and you know what? It might be kind of restricted by who can actually get to it because, uh, yeah, the others are here. They're observing, but they're not really jumping into it. So really having it somewhere out here might be better in the future. Yeah, everyone's just kind of holding still and <laughs> watching it happen. But Pex is here, able to participate in the devouring and... Excellent. Oh, and we even got a new person out of that as well. Okay, a fun blood cult celebration. Which does mean that our development points are getting higher. And yeah, another person, Kenta, a framer named Kenta, wants to join the colony. We're going to be saying yes. And Kenta, looking like a bit of a badass there, really. Let's have a look at you, see what we've got going on. You're currently 40 years of age. In your bio, you're super immune, you're a careful shooter, you do have some passion there? Yeah, as a melee fighter, but it wouldn't be bad to get you shooting as well. Your construction skill is really nice and high. Alright, a fantastic candidate, but Kenta, that name will not do. You're gonna need something new. Kenta, you shall now be known as Tyler Wolf. He's gonna be a good addition to our colony here. There's not enough rooms as of yet, but with <laughs> how many people we've got here, I think we're going to be able to manage with that. And you know what? I think we will shift you just ahead of Shivo and Suarez because you're not a kid. And I mean, they aren't either, but they're not full adults yet. 
Oh boy, our guests are having to sleep in a messy space. Dallas, Dallas. <laughs> okay, that looks like Dallas and Edith are getting a little friendly. I mean, it has been a long time since Ben was taken. And, well, there is a sad reality in Roomworld where after a little while, those people disappear. Uh, quite literally. And there's a chance that that might have already happened for Edith. No, no, he's still out there. But hostile. He's been turned. He is, well, he's changed sides. We're not giving up on Ben. No. Even if it means we have to fight every single settlement that the imps have on the map, we will not give up. Not until that hope has vanished. Right now, we know, we have a sense that he is still out there. You can see that most of our guests are assisting us in the smoothing process down here. There is a lot to smooth out, but we're getting it done. It is amazing to see that we have nearly cleared this area out. I've been asking for all the bugs to get hauled, and uh, we're very, (laughs) we're very close now. This also means that we've had a absolutely massive influx of insect meat yet again. We're sitting on a lot of food resources right now, and just in general, a lot of bodies. Just so many bug bodies. We're starting the process of (laughs) trying to convince Pex that, uh, oh, hang on. What? Formerly Free Doctrine. Did, Did you just do that in one? I think he just did that in one. Jack Dodge, well done. (laughs) <laughs> Bit of a moment of truth here. Lilion is having that Arcotech arm installed. So let's hope Rabbit Ghoul does a good job. Crossing our fingers here, we even get the bionic arm back intact. Arcotech arm. Efficiency 150%. Excellent. Good stuff, Lilion. Oh, well, it looks like we're going to be dealing with some more bugs. Shiva, let's get you backing up. And we'll make sure that you have some backup. <laughs> The crew are making their way in towards the tunnels as I speak, and we just need someone to plug up the gaps, really. Making sure, of course, that we are going to have something of a uh, decent front line. Grab a ghoul, just hold that spot there. Excellent. Shivo's holding the front very well. Excellent work, everybody. Nearly there, just a few more shots should be enough to do it. Come on, now. Maybe a whack from Grab ghoul. Ah, there we are. Do some cross coagulation, <laughs> and I think we're good. And it looks like Malicept is able to get an expertise. How nice. Drilling, prospecting, tunneling, or geology. I think we're going to pick up tunneling for expansion purposes. And an alcohol addiction, Suarez. Really? Really? <laughs> You're 13, my dude. Well, it is a hard life out here, you know, <laughs> in the blood keep. I mean, the good thing is that, you know, There is a lot of alcohol here. (laughs) I mean, yeah, we've got 136 beers in the fridge. He'll be okay. And this one is a long, long time coming, but Jesse is finally having an operation to uh, work on these rather damaged legs. You're going to be getting two bionic legs slapped on there, Jesse. Let's hope the surgery goes well. What? Thanks, Randy. (laughs) Cargopod just popped down, and it's an EMP launcher. Always, always useful. And you know what? I feel like we should maybe keep them specifically by the door. We should have two now, I think. Yeah, specifically, these two stockpiles are going to be for EMP launchers. Looks like the surgery went well for Jesse as we have two bionic legs there. His moving is certainly looking better. The anesthetic is going to uh, be affecting that, though. He's still got a fair few wounds here that will slowly heal over time, those scars disappearing. But the other ones that aren't scars, the ones that are more cracks, they'll be around for a while. Well, well, looking at this, Glintwine, I believe, is ready to implant some genes, and Freya has been waiting a long time. Let's just be 100% sure. Yup, she should be good to go. Okay. This will definitely help with Freya's recovery. It's been slow going, but yeah, she's gonna have to be in bed a little bit longer because of it. But Freya is now a sanguifage. Oh man, that's not good. 
Um, there was a catastrophic failure. Catastrophic failure on a surgery. There's no reason why a surgery should have happened down here. Edith must have just been asleep. That's very bad. And very rare for that to happen. Rabbit ghoul, get back in there. Let's seal those wounds. Uh, yeah. Edith is going to make a recovery there, I think. But that's still not great. And we're down one arm. That's okay. We do still have others. And we're going to make sure we get you shifted to the surgery bed. Gomi, I'm going to need you to get out of there. Now, I was talking about Gomi being a very good candidate earlier. He is, but unfortunately he is currently going through, well, some go juice withdrawals that we can't really help with. So he's going to be chilling out in here for yeah, most of the time the rest of the folks are here. All right, Rabbit Ghoul, let's give that another shot, eh? And I'm sure we can turn one of these beds here into a hospital bed so that Gomi can get properly rescued. Now, with everything else that's here, we should be fine. But we have some wild boars. Okay, well, that's not really so much a concern right now. They can be mad. We'll just keep these doors nice and locked. I mean, they're going to aggressively attack everything else that's here. But that's not our problem. It is a problem if a trade caravan shows up, but, you know, I'm sure they could handle themselves. And Edith. Yes, excellent. Looks like that went well. Oh, and yeah, let's make sure that you're using actual proper medicine here, Rabbit Ghoul. That was one arm down, one to go. Nearly there. Excellent. Good work. And welcome back. Quite a bit of time has passed. We are now sitting on the 7th of Jugast, Jorgast, and yes, <laughs> as you might be able to tell, we've been very, very busy. We have managed to finish these three rooms here and we're starting to expand further into the mountainside, actually pushing things as far as we possibly can. And well, this area here is pretty much complete. We have our recycling plant here where all of our lower level crafters will be able to hone their own craft by taking apart all this tainted clothing. And this is all tainted. Down here we have our two proper crafting tables where our very best will be able to put together various garments for us. And of course, down here is going to be extra living space, which right now we don't need, but I'm expanding for the future. And this over here is going to be our fabrication zone. This is where weapons are going to be made. This is where armor is going to be made. And that will kind of leave this as a general crafting zone and laboratory. Yeah, I felt like we've got enough space, we've got enough room to be able to have these specific spaces. And then we can kind of also tell exactly how much we have available for breaking down. And oh boy, there's a lot of clothing to be broken down. Oh, and you might also be noticing that kind of everyone is looking a little bit different. We have finally managed to get the styling station to work so that folks can actually dye all their gear automatically. And at this stage, they're dyeing their gear their favorite color. And so we are going to have a mixture of different looks across the colony. And I'm okay with that. Eric is rocking this hot pink look. Angelica has this nice kind of teal. Yeah. It's, uh, it's neat to see all of their different personalities being expressed through these colors. Jonathan, I believe. Well, okay, here's the interesting thing about Jonathan. Now that he is considered to be a knight, royalty, he wanted to have some kind of prestige gear on, and so we've given him this prestige helmet. However, when he wears it, it makes his facial hair disappear. So hold still for a second, my lad. Yeah, weird, right? Doesn't doesn't look right but there doesn't seem to be a way to fix it as of yet so Jonathan will keep your weird facial hair defying helmet on for now because it suits your needs it looks like Shivo has actually picked up a expertise and I think it's probably going to be to do with mining he is our main miner and yeah he's also still a miner but looking at his expertise, yes, depth talker, that's what I was looking for. We've got drilling, prospecting, and tunneling. Geology in there as well. Obviously, tunneling will allow him to kind of, well, tunnel faster. But drilling, using the deep drill to mine resources more efficiently. I like that. He'll just be able to get stuff for us faster in general. And for the most part, once we're done digging, that's it. We're done digging. But we are always going to be drilling for more. Our guests are doing as well as they possibly could in a keep filled with sanguifages. But you know, they're of the blood, so 
they enjoy their life here to a degree. Gomi is still suffering from almost every withdrawal possible. And um, yeah, <laughs> we could have given him something sooner, but I think we're just going to let him try and ride it out. And finally, we do have a quest available. Loving chickens. Oh, it really doesn't have much to do with chickens. Oh, it does. It does. Um, so the Duchess of the Empire of Eternity, or a Duchess, uh, Procera, wants us to take care of some chickens. However, these chickens are sought after by mechanoids. Two raids. Significant raids. Look at that. 80 lances. 22 tesserons and three diabolus. I, we, we haven't faced them. It does give us a chance to get a persona core, which is useful. And I mean, the amount of honor really is too, but that, that's wild. 13 janissaries will be placed under our control. We'll have to feed and house them, but they may die in battle without consequence. That would, well, that would be quite the test of our metal. Could we really handle those numbers. Hard to know. <laughs> Very hard to know. I think that quest is probably also taking into account that we have these temporary colonists here as well, which could potentially be fighting for us, but no, it, we're not going to put them through it. While they are believers of the blood, they're, they're not really fighters. Oh hey, you know what? I forgot to accept the honor. Jonathan. Let's get that night ceremony going. And I think, there they are, landing outside. And I don't know why the shuttle changed its graphics recently, but I do like the new design. And I also do like that they can arrive safely <laughs> for a change. Well, they are here in the chamber. Let's look at beginning that ceremony. And we can have a lot of people attending. Excellent. Let us begin. Oh, and this is really going to give you an opportunity to see all of the different colors that we have across the colony. Nice. <laughs> oh, wait, John, wh why are you not there, Jonathan? Jonathan, I, fe I feel like you should probably be there. I don't know why he chose not to stay. Um, oh dear. I feel like that's going to affect the ceremony. <laughs> They're just kind of all hanging out here. Yeah, you know what? Clean the room, Jonathan. Yeah, that, that doesn't seem to be a way to, to <laughs> get that going again. Well, I'm I'm sure they won't wait here until they die. Well, I've managed to get everyone to leave the <laughs> ceremony. So hopefully we'll be able to attempt it again down the line. Jonathan's meditating right now, but it's got nothing to do with this ceremony. And we've had an animal transportation pod crash on down. Oh, Otto. Yeah, <laughs> that didn't last long. And, of course, Bristlemouth's cache of goodies. A helimic serum is nearby. Well, well, it's out there across the hills. There is a threat here, of course, that we still need to take care of this weather control station, which is causing things to be a little cooler here. And you know what? Depending on how things go here, that might be how we handle the second half of our episode today. We just don't want to uh, abandon these folks just yet. Oh, would you look at that? We got a growth moment for Eland, who is now 10 years of age. Looks like we're going to be able to pick out two different passions for her. Crafting is always hard to say no to. And I think we're going to be picking up melee as well. As for traits, we've got Cannibal, Insomniac, Quick Sleeper, and Psychopath. I think we're going to go for Psychopath. Quick Sleeper is a fantastic trait, but Eland, I think Eland's going to take after her mother and father a fair amount. Yes. She is coming along well. With nine in melee, and with that passion and crafting now, you're going to be quite the colonist. Oh, maybe we should have just hit the cancel bestowing ceremony button. Yeah. <laughs> we can try that again at a later date. So yeah, he head on home, you lot. Get safe. <laughs> and you know what? The sun has fallen. And so with that, our transportation pods will rise. Oh, we can bring a lot of us in five pods. I think it's because it splits the weight, the total weight, over all of the pods. Didn't realize that. Well, I'm learning new things about RimWorld all the time. So that's going to be quite the away team. We're going to get them locked and loaded. Then we're going to get these pods flying. Okay, we're ready to go before uh, they are. They're still waiting for some of the others that are eating inside. Well, no point in us waiting. Let's select that launch group, 
and let's launch. We are going to be landing. Well, let's maybe pop in from the edge. Off they go. And there they are. Let's hope we're going to land intact here. And very good. Excellent. Okay, so what are we looking at here? All right, that ain't much of a mechanoid presence. Honestly, that's the kind of thing that I think we could probably just push in and absolutely demolish. Now, the mech assembler is going to assemble some mechs. I think the best thing that we can do is just get our firing line out here. All firing at once at the one target. And yeah, we, we are going to get hit. But look at that. Turned out okay for us. Oh, I was going to say the rest didn't wake up, but they, they did. But I think one big volley from us, it seems to be enough to be able to take them down. We're going to go for the assembler before it can actually assemble. Brilliant. Now let's just edge out around the corner here, and we've got a few targets that we need to try and hit, so we'll take them down quickly if we can. Also, I believe Jonathan does have a belt. Let's get that shield belt going. Firing away. Okay, the mini turret is nearly down. Oh, excellent. Fantastic. And now we've just got the weather control station that's there. And it looks like Angelica was the only one that was injured out of everyone there. So, <laughs> we'll do some healing, and then we'll send in Lilion and Edith to go and finish this off on. Ah, oh, they must have flown away because we now, we now have the chance to make our lad, Jonathan a knight. Not long now, and there we go. Excellent. The control station is destroyed. Let's just allow everything on the map, and we'll step off and get them tell. Oh. Yeah, my mistake. Uh, I guess we won't be teleporting just yet, will we? Hmm. And it's not like raiders are gonna show up either. Ha ha ha. Yes, we need side focus for us to be able to teleport back home. It's not that much of a journey though. And who knows, we might get ambushed along the way. And thankfully, that was a rather quick trip back. <laughs> they returned through the caves there and thankfully there is a way for us to make it out of there. So, you know what, Jonathan? Let's give this thing a go one last time, eh? The shuttle is arriving. No one's going to get squished. And yeah, we'll see. We'll see if we can make this work. All right, Jonathan. Round two. Let's begin the ceremony as we have a masterwork. How nice. This time, it seems he is going to be attending his own bestowing ceremony, which certainly helps. Ah, there we go. Just like that, Jonathan. And we do have everyone here just kind of creepily uh, leaning backwards and forwards. Don't worry about them. They'll be fine. Yes, as it's now time for us to celebrate Jonathan's ascension to knighthood. And it was an honorable bestowing ceremony. Excellent. I don't know if he would have gotten any extra psi powers because we've been kind of jumping ahead with Jonathan a little bit here. Hard to tell, really. We've got Skip as our level four. So, no, I don't think we have at this stage. But even so, that does mean that he has more permits that he can choose from. So, let's see what we have available for us. Ideally, what I would probably want to try and hold out for would be the laborer gang. But at the same time, that transportation shuttle has been invaluable. And having both him and Lilion having access to that just gives us so much more range. And so it is with that that we'll be drawing our curtain on Hexam for this day. We started with bugs, and I suppose we ended with some bugs. Oh, and that dinging you're hearing? That's just Therian making masterwork after masterwork human leather doormats. How lucky we are, eh? But yes, outside the bugs at the start, today has been relatively peaceful for us. And we've taken that peaceful time to expand, using the extra hands that we've had available to us to turn Hexham into the necropolis that I have always envisioned. In the next episode, we'll be focusing a little bit more on our expeditions out there in the world. We still have another artifact to track down, and of course, we're not giving up on Ben yet. I'd like to hit at least two new locations, and with more capabilities from the Empire, well, we might just have that opportunity. But that Legionnaires is all going to be in the next. I'd like to thank you all for joining me for yet another. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show. As for now, I have been Rikon. You have all been awesome. And until next time, 
stay tuned.